This is the donut. The goal of the donut is to meet the needs of all people within the means of the planet. Sometimes when I present the ideas of donut economics, people say, mm, is this capitalism or is this communism or is it socialism? And you think, really? Are these the only choices we have? The isms of the last century? Can we not come up with some ideas of our own and create new names for them and see new patterns? Governments in every country are almost addicted to citing GDP figures as if this was proof of success. And yet it's so clearly not. Because we have climate breakdown and COVID lockdown and financial meltdown, we have to pursue something far richer to move from this pursuit of endless growth, which we can now see is hitting us with crisis after crisis, moving to a goal of thriving. And the donut is absolutely possible to turn not into a single number, but into a dashboard. We could hold policymakers to account and say every year, you need to talk about how you are making progress on these different dimensions of the donut. The outside of the donut is created by leading Earth system scientists just a decade ago. These are the nine life supporting systems of planet Earth. To have a stable climate, to have healthy oceans, to have recharging fresh water. And they drew these and called them the planetary boundaries. And they said we must stay in the circle in the middle. I thought, but if we go to the center of the circle, where we use hardly any of Earth's resources, that's not thriving. That is actually death and destitution for billions of people. We need to convert Earth's lands for food, for water, for housing, for energy. So I drew this inner circle and said, just as there is an outer limit of humanity's pressure on the planet, so too there must be an inner limit. So the hole in the middle is a place where people are left falling short on the essentials of life. It's where people don't have the food, water, energy, healthcare, housing, education, political voice that every person has a claim to meeting. We want to leave nobody in this hole, get everybody into the green ring of the donut itself. Ever since the donut was first published in 2012, people have been wanting to downscale it to the scale of a city or a neighborhood or a nation. And Amsterdam is the first place where we've actually downscaled it. And I've worked together with an organization called Circle Economy, who have been helping the city devise their strategy. Amsterdam having a very ambitious vision of becoming a, a fully circular city by 2050. What happens with the donut is that because it brings all these themes together of the social aspects and the environmental, you need to start a conversation with everybody in the room. We invited all different departments that they were not used to be part of this conversation. How can we create housing in Amsterdam that is available for all different incomes at the same time is supporting uh, the well-being of people who live in the house and how does uh, this construction is made with materials that reducing the, the global emissions and the climate. With the city donut we suddenly see in the portrait of the city the impact that Amsterdam has in let's say Bangladesh and people's life there that work in producing producing uh, the clothes that we wear in Amsterdam and how a city can start thinking about all this and creating strategies that are taking this into account. The donut does not give us answers. You don't plug in a calculation and it tells you how to do it. What it does is provide a space for people to come together. In fact, in Amsterdam, the policymakers said, we now realize that if we're aiming to get into the donut, we need to change our own internal organization so that we're more holistic and connected in our planning and policy. And I think smart policymakers realize that they don't need a solution to financial crisis and a different one to climate crisis and a different one to health emergencies. They need a paradigm that no longer pushes for endless growth, but instead focuses on thriving, on resilience and on well-being within communities.
We began with this downscaling in rich cities, in high income nations, because they are the ones that have the greatest obligation to transform, to come back within planetary boundaries. But I believe the framework that we've created can absolutely be adapted and used in low income countries and cities. In fact, in Costa Rica, they've just launched an initiative called Regenerate Costa Rica. They have an ambition to become one of the world's first regenerative nations, and they're using the donut as a framework for guiding them to that goal. It always looks like transformation is going to take many, many decades. And one thing I think we've seen in many countries from this COVID pandemic is that actually policies can happen almost overnight when governments decide to make them happen. Change is absolutely possible if we transform the political values and interests and the mindset. <laughs>